Hey y'all, so remember whenever I made that lightened up fried chicken video and I asked if y'all wanted me to make more vegetable recipes because in my real life I make a ton of vegetable recipes and I just want to share them all with you. Put it in the comments if you want me to do more vegetable recipes. I have a lot of them in my back pocket. Well, we had such a good response and ask and you shall receive because I am making four winter veggie recipes that I love and I'm putting them all together on a winter vegetable plate. So what we have on the docket, melting sweet potatoes. If you've never tried regular melting potatoes, you are missing out, but these sweet potatoes are so delicious. It's kind of like sweet potato casserole, but so much better. Then we have a kale Caesar salad with toasted breadcrumbs. It's a lightened up version of a Caesar dressing tossed with some curly kale. It is delicious. Kale Caesar is one of my favorite things that I order in restaurants and we are making it at home. The third one, sauteed mustard greens with lemon and garlic. Also delicious, a new spin on a way to cook a hearty winter green that is not stewing them. And then last but not least, balsamic green beans with pearl onions. It's decadent and I can't wait for y'all to try them all. So let's get started. The first step for these melting sweet potatoes, which I'm so excited about, is melting butter. It calls to melt a half a cup of butter, which is one full stick, and then you're gonna toss your peeled and sliced sweet potatoes in the butter. So I'm gonna go ahead and melt the butter in a large bowl in the microwave so that I don't dirty up another bowl and then I can toss my potatoes directly into the melted butter. Butter is melted and in we go with the sweet potatoes. All of my sweet potatoes and all of the melted butter are in a single layer on this baking sheet. I'm gonna sprinkle it with salt and pepper and then roast them in the oven at 450 degrees for about 15 minutes. If you've never had melting potatoes, y'all, your life is about to be changed. Okay into the oven at 450 degrees. Using my time wisely while the sweet potatoes are in the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on my green beans. This green bean process is first, basically blanching the green beans, which is a fancy thing that we learned in culinary school. Green beans that you get that are like bright, bright green in restaurants, this is why. It's because they are boiled first and then submerged in ice water to stop the cooking process. It makes them really green and crisp tender, and then you can saute them and they're beautiful and they're tasty. The green beans are blanched and chilling out in the ice water, like literally chilling out, LOL. And now we are going to make the dressing for the kale Caesar. The base of Caesar dressing is eggs and oil, which is basically mayonnaise. So I'm going to put in some mayonnaise, equal parts mayonnaise, and then Greek yogurt because this is a lightened up version of Caesar dressing. Quarter cup each mayo and plain Greek yogurt. Next ingredient for the Caesar dressing is lemon zest and juice. So I need a teaspoon of lemon zest and then three tablespoons of lemon juice. Next ingredient, Dijon mustard and Worcestershire. We need a teaspoon of each. My secret to everything that I cook is Worcestershire. I'm the world's biggest Worcestershire fan. So you need about a teaspoon of that. If you put a little bit more, I promise it's not gonna make it taste bad. It's just gonna make it taste even better. Then we need a, some salt and pepper. The next ingredient is grated garlic, a teaspoon of that. Next ingredient I also grabbed was my Parmesan cheese. I need about a tablespoon of that, which honestly I don't think is enough. So I'm going in with a little bit more. And I'm gonna whisk all of this together to make my yummy, yummy Caesar dressing. And then now that this is ready, we can set it off to the side and deal with our sweet potatoes and chop some kale. 15 minutes. Here are the sweet potatoes. So now I'm going to flip the potatoes and um, let them cook for about 10 minutes. Um, and then I'll add the chicken stock. After you flipped all your sweet potatoes, you can sprinkle them with the remaining salt and pepper, about half a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And then they can go back in the oven until they are browned. 
Sweet potatoes have been in and they are done with rounds one and two of cooking. Now they have to go in for round three. This recipe seems a little complicated. I promise it's so easy. If you can open an oven door, slide potatoes in and out of the oven, you can handle it. So for round three of cooking, they have cooked on both sides in the butter. We are adding in the thing that makes them melting, which is unsalted chicken stock. So this is why it's really important that you need a rimmed baking sheet. The potatoes are going to kind of soak up some of the chicken broth and flavor, but it's also going to like evaporate in the oven and it's just, it's melting and delicious and literally melt in your mouth good. So chicken stock onto the pan. All right, back in the oven, about 10 minutes. Okay, recap of what we've done so far. The melting potatoes, those are the last step. They are out of the oven. I didn't show taking them out of the oven. I figured y'all had seen that enough. So they're out of the oven. Now it is time to make the toasted breadcrumb topping for the kale Caesar. Heat your olive oil in the skillet and the original recipe calls for a third cup of breadcrumbs. I'm using a half because I like my salads extra crunchy. And then some freshly ground black pepper. Okay, once they're almost all evenly golden brown and crisp like this, then they are done. The last ingredient for the kale salad is a grated hard cooked egg. There's two of them, so I'm just gonna run my egg over the large holes of a box grater. Now we have to chop all of these kale leaves. Final step, dressing this kale Caesar. Make sure to scrape all of this good, good dressing. I'm gonna toss it with our grated egg and a few of these breadcrumbs, like that much. And some Parmesan cheese. I'm saving a little bit of breadcrumbs and Parmesan cheese to put on top of the salad, but the majority of it I want to go into the salad. Okay, and now let's top it with the rest of our cheese and breadcrumbs. Next recipe on the docket, balsamic green beans with pearl onions. So cast iron pan, I am going to melt a tablespoon of butter and then add in frozen pearl onions. So these pearl onions, I let thaw overnight in the refrigerator so that they are not frozen. And then I patted them dry with paper towels. Whenever you're trying to caramelize something, it is very important to pat things dry. That is how you get that like golden caramelized crust. If it's wet, it's just gonna like basically steam and you don't really want that. So once your butter has melted in your skillet, you can add in your pearl onions and we are going to let those cook until they are caramelized, which is gonna take about 10 minutes. While the onions are caramelizing, I'm gonna get a head start on the mustard greens with lemon and garlic. I love a mustard green, love a mustard green. Unfortunately, I could not get mustard greens right now, but I could find collard greens and really any hearty winter green will work for this recipe. You are going to need about three pounds of them, which equals about 24 cups, which is honestly a ton. First thing, you're gonna need a Dutch oven. Heat some olive oil, about two tablespoons. I'm gonna put my collard greens into my hot oil in batches. You do that just so they can wilt because all of them in there together, it's honestly way too big for the pot and you just need to add it in batches. Once they are wilted, cover them and then they need to cook for about 10 to 12 minutes. You can stir them ever so often. Back to the green beans. These pearl onions are looking so good and caramelized. Look at these y'all. Once your pearl onions are looking amazingly caramelized like this, add in some minced garlic. This is a teaspoon of minced garlic. Nice and toasty. And then we're adding in a third cup of balsamic vinegar and a tablespoon of sugar. And once that is slightly thickened and really bubbly, you can add in a half a tablespoon of butter more salt and pepper, and then your green beans. I have drained them. Same thing with the onions. You want them to be mostly dry, so I put them on a paper towel so they dry off, so they aren't adding any extra liquid to our sauce. You're really only heating your green beans back up and getting them nice and coated in the sauce, and then they are 
ready. When If they start turning colors, you really don't want them to look like this. You want them to be bright green. That's why we blanch them in the water. When they're warm, you can transfer them to a serving plate. Yum. Green beans are done. I moved those to a serving platter and I moved my greens up to the front burner. The thing I have to do now, add in my garlic. So the recipe called for four large cloves of garlic. I had eight small cloves, so I just sliced up eight small cloves. I'm going to add the garlic into the wilted greens and then have my lemon juice and crushed red pepper on standby along with my salt and pepper. When your greens are smelling really garlicky, the garlic has been sauteing for about a minute or two, you can add in your lemon juice, two tablespoons, and crushed red pepper. This is totally optional. I think it's great for this recipe. And then, as always, salt and pepper. And there we have it, wilted winter greens with lemon and garlic. The last and final step for this winter veggie plate extravaganza is the maple walnut sauce that goes on top of the melting sweet potatoes. So it's kind of like a take on sweet potato casserole, but instead this is like so much better. It's sweet and savory all at the same time. So what you do is melt a quarter cup of butter in a saucepan and you're gonna add in some toasted walnuts, some maple syrup, and some salt. Once all of that has kind of emulsified, you can pour it over your melting sweet potatoes on a serving platter, and then you can dig in. It is decadent. Let's dig in. Okay, first thing I'm going for are these greens. They're gonna be so yummy. Mm. Mm -hmm. If the only way that you're cooking winter greens, like collard greens, mustard greens, turnip greens, whatever, is stewing them, stop it right now. Chop them, put them in a salad, like this kale salad. Stir fry them, wilt them with garlic and lemons. Your life will be forever changed. Okay, now these green beans. Mmm. I, I, I like barely got it in my mouth and it, as soon as it hit my tongue, that balsamic sauce. Wow. And these onions, y'all know, I love an onion. So this balsamic onion green bean situation. Whew, okay, kale Caesar. Mmm. It's so lemony and crunchy. And the dressing coats all of the curly nooks and crannies of the kale. And I put extra breadcrumbs on there to make it extra crunchy. And it's delicious. And then the sweet potatoes. Y'all didn't know that this whole end of the video was just gonna be me eating, did you? I didn't either. Oh wow, the sweet potatoes are next level good. Like I'm, I'm kind of tearing up on how good they are. Woo, okay, so this by far to date has been one of my most favorite Hey Y'all episodes for the sole reason of I just get to sit here and cook and eat a lot of vegetables because in my real life, I love cooking and eating a lot of vegetables and y'all wanted the vegetable recipes, so here I am giving them to you. I know that you're gonna love every single one, and if you make a vegetable recipe, even if it's not one of these, or you just have one you wanna share, be sure to tag me on Instagram, at Ivy Odom. Since y'all were so excited about telling me that you wanted more veggie recipes, if you have something else that you really want me to do, I would love to read about it in the comments. You know what to do, all the social media things, like, comment, subscribe, share, click the bell, whatever. I will see y'all next time on Hey Y'all. Happy cooking.